March. The empire is on the run. We've been running that intro. The intro you're listening to right now since about 1998. We are on the march. The empire is on the run. What is the empire? The empire of lies, the empire of fraud, the empire of cheating, the empire of deceit and globalist manipulation, the empire of government through conquest, culture through conquest and thuggish, brutal oppression versus government of and by the people, government of renaissance, government of openness. It is the great paradox. But sometimes I hear that promo, that intro, and I think, yes, we are on the march. The empire is on the run. Other times I look at all the tyranny expanding like a metastasizing cancer, and I say to myself, humanity is falling, goodness is collapsing, evil, the empire. The globalist invisible hand, the invisible empire, is coming out in the open, and it is on the march. The truth is, evil is always on the march, and good is always on the march. And there are those competing forces in the world, and there are many other variants and forces in the world. The globalists are not in control. They don't have total control. They're lusting after a technotronic, technocratic, panopticonic, global, dehumanizing, computerized, omnipresent, counterfeit, godlike system, the Pentagon calls it the mind of God, these computers they're building, to attempt total control. But if they themselves are fallen creatures, how could they ever even imagine that they could harness or control such a force? I've got to cover the news today, and I say that so many times when we start a broadcast, but it's absolutely got to be covered this evening. There is so much to go over. Just huge news on every front. Look at these headlines. West poised to join forces with Assad. The Washington Post says, was Putin right? Saying the West was aiding Al-Qaeda? What does that mean? What do these headlines signify? Meanwhile, Libya is completely falling to Al-Qaeda right now. The east of the country had already been under control for four years, even before Gaddafi fell. They are murdering every Christian and every Muslim and every black person they get their hands on. You'll hear no coverage of it. But the headline in uh, Bloomberg is, why Libya is a failed state now. <gasps> Oh, it's like shoving an old woman at the mall down an escalator, just hitting her in the back of the head, watching her tumble down and break her neck and going, someone call an ambulance. She broke her neck in front of everybody. Just punch her right in the back of the head or hit her with a blackjack or a baseball bat right square in the head. And she goes tumbling down and granny tries to get up. Oh, bam, her breaking her legs. She got hurt. But the public can't find Libya, right between Egypt and Tunisia, with both eyeballs on a map, even when it's named. Foreign media comes to the U.S. and makes fun of us and shows people world maps and they can't even find Australia or England on it. But, but let me tell you, they can watch ESPN with all the college football coaches coming in for their big rundown. Sit around drinking six packs of beer, feeling real manly. We're going to go to break. And when we come back, I'm going to launch into all the big news. From Ferguson to the Democrats saying if we don't legalize illegals, they'll become terrorists. To the earthquake that hit San Francisco and other areas, a 6.0. And many experts believe it's the harbinger of bigger ones to come. 
Alex Jones here with a message to fellow freedom lovers. The prognosis for the entire planetary economic system runs from bad to worse. The globalist model is to shut down societies and starve patriots out until they acquiesce to the global takeover. That's why we've assembled the most vital and important preparedness items at InfoWarsShop.com. These are items that I did research on, that I personally use. You've got the life straw, so you can turn fetid water into safe water anywhere you go. The KTOR hand crank generator to charge up key equipment during power outages or out in the field. Strategic Relocation 3rd Edition by Joel Scalzo. When Disaster Strikes by Matthew Stein. Therosafe used by Homeland Security to protect yourself during any radiological event. Hand crank shortwave AM FM radios. Everything that we've researched and found to be the best is available at InfoWarsShop.com. And your purchase makes our InfoWar possible. We're getting prepared. Are you? InfoWarsShop.com. Let me just do this. Let me just give you the headlines that I have here in the stack that we're going to be covering in the first hour. Open phones in the second. Merkel, that's the chancellor of Germany, jets into Kiev, that's the capital if you're a new listener or a public school educated person like myself, of Ukraine as tensions soar over Ukraine. China hosts largest military drill with Russia. As China basically threatens the United States to have its jets back off its coastline. That's in Bloomberg. Continuing, Iran is unveiling new missiles and drones. Libyan Islamists seize Tripoli Airport as Parliament dual set to unfold as Al-Qaeda prepares to take full control of Libya. Our government removed Gaddafi, who worked with the West for eight years, turned over all his weapons and apologized, set him up, turned Al-Qaeda loose, they are 10 times worse. This is a destabilization program. We're going to continue with analysis of that, but there's the headline. New fear. What happens in Ferguson if there's no charges? Associated Press, as evidence mounts that the police officer was attacked and had his uh, rotary bone around his eye broken, and as eyewitnesses' videos emerge with people reporting uh, that just that had happened and that the officer's story is true, then I ask the question, why in the world is there no dash cam video? A, but, it, but they turned it off. B, why aren't the police parading out all these witnesses that shot cell phone video minutes after it happened? Local residents that are black talking about what happened, all confirming what the officer said. Really stirring things up. Obama is stirring things up, saying police uh, that are militarizing with few checks, uh, he, he's launching an investigation of the militarization of police. That is really rich, uh, my friends. That's from the Hill newspaper. Because it's the federal government that has been giving the training, the grants, the uniforms, the armored vehicles, uh, just all of it. While the globalists, through the federal government, destabilize the country... Force people on welfare, basically, by deindustrialization. Open the borders up. Rand Corporation, 20 years ago, wrote about the destabilization plan for the U.S. The answer would be the National Stabilization Force, first published in 1997. I covered it on local radio and on access television. I was a weirdo. You know, I read government documents and things that were public. I go down to the UT Law Library and uh, get the hard copies of it. And I would show people the plan to collapse America and bring in an authoritarian state in the name of stopping the collapse. See, because the collapse is coming. Oh, now we need the armored vehicles. We need the militarized police. Been warning people for a long time as I fought it. Because they're going to collapse the system and then the militarized police will stabilize things. Of course, in the next phase, they'll send in feds to take over talk radio, the internet, free speech, and arrest the political opposition of the next socialist, communist total takeover. This is not my opinion. I've told you everything that's coming up until this point. So we're trying to checkmate them to wake up the police and military so they see the larger plan and the state legislatures and people that aren't total criminals in Congress to see the game plan, decompartmentalize it, and reverse the whole program. You can watch films I made in the year 2000 
police state to the takeover, where I detail this total takeover plan. And no, I didn't come up with this on my own. I was told this by major police chiefs. I was told this by the head of emergency management in Kingsville, Texas. I was told this basically by the San Antonio police chief. I was told this by a lot of government sources because I was willing to go on air and talk about it. Because they were all approached to be paid off by Homeland Security before it even existed publicly under Clinton. So this program was already set up under Clinton. Jimmy Carter set it up. Reagan let it go for a while, but Clinton really set it up officially. The, 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 the continuity of government, COG, NORTHCOM program. Then 9-11 comes, and then it's, oh, it's about terrorists, so it's okay. That's the public rollout of it. Then Obama gets back in, the Democrats get back in, the Clintons get their third term through Obama, basically. And oh my gosh, we're going to use Homeland Security on the Tea Party veterans and gun owners when it was always set up for that from the beginning. And I told you all of that was coming. On the day of 9-11 when it happened, I said, you watch, in a decade or so, this will be used against the general public. If you're not a criminal, if you're a moral person, they don't like you because you stand in the way of their takeover. And that means taking your pension funds, it means taking your bank accounts, it means bail-ins, as they call them. They've already done this in over 100 other countries the last 60 years or so. And the average person at Northcom is a good man or woman. The average cop's a good person. The average FBI person's not bad. They're compartmentalized, folks, and they're being rolled out on legitimate missions while in the background the training accelerates for the criminal, tyrannical missions. But see, after collapse, after the terrorists, after ISIS smuggles a nuke into the U.S. and detonates it, and why it'll be tied to the Tea Party, that's already in the Army War College training, that the Tea Party will merge with al-Qaeda and attack America. Again, that's like saying that um, Superman will join forces with Lex Luthor or that... Uh, Spider-Man will join forces uh, with the Green Goblin. Doesn't matter if it doesn't make sense. It doesn't make sense to have our government fund Al-Qaeda to attack Assad three years ago and try to bomb Assad so he couldn't defeat him. It doesn't make sense to give him 15,000 Stinger missiles. That's mainstream news now that they were given those missiles in Benghazi. And we told you they'd start targeting the West. That'd be the next new wave of why they need tanks on the streets and checkpoints is for ISIS or IS or all the new names of Al-Qaeda. And they'll probably let IS in. They'll attack. And then the Homeland Security apparatus will be for your political speech. It'll be to shut you up. It'll be to make sure you go along with your pension fund being taken. Not for IS. That's how this works, ladies and gentlemen. How many times you have to hear me predict everything that will happen before it happens? How many times do you have to be told exactly how the world works before you listen to me and stop it? I'm talking to legislatures. I'm talking to governors right now. I'm talking to all of you that are listening. The military. Two plus two equals four. I know under Common Core they teach us two plus two equals five. And I'm a conspiracy theorist because I say the government's lying. It equals four. Now, you can choose reality, the republic, freedom, or the delusion of CNN and MSNBC. Everything we said came true. Everything we've done has been right.